it happened. Intel now officially released a new flagship CPU that's worse than their previous one. Trying to make things right, I challenged myself and put a few extra hours of work into overclocking today's CPU to 5.1 GHz, but I ended up with quite the nasty surprise. You guessed it, today we are taking the Intel Core i9-11900K Rocket Lake processor for a spin, featuring only 8 cores and 16 threads, more on that very soon. First off, let's take a critical look at pricing. The current PC hardware market situation still is utter chaos, so I'm kind of forced to get a somewhat fixed reference point, which again is the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price. According to Intel, we'd have to shell out 539 US dollars for such an i9-11900K. However, in reality, we're actually looking at street prices ranging between 650 and insane 800 dollars. And here's our very first warning sign, pretty much coming from Intel themselves. The predecessor i9-10900K is equipped with a whopping 10 cores, so two more than its successor. Yet according to Intel's MSRP, it quote-unquote only costs $488. Realistically speaking, the current street price for that one is at roughly $530. And things do not get better from here on. With the 11900K, Intel hardly even succeeds in delivering a proper successor to last year's top-of-the-line CPU. So how does Rocket Lake fare against the by now fairly strong competition AMD? Right off the bat, we are light years away from perfection here, but still, in one or the other aspect, Intel does actually manage to impress with a little bit of magic out of their hat. Other than with previous years, they are now obviously reducing themselves to simply good gaming performance. Multi-threading, thus productivity workloads, apparently no longer are in focus marketing-wise. One can already sense why that is. As mentioned before already, the 11900K comes with two fewer cores than the ex-flagship model 10900K. Luckily for us, there was no introduction of a new socket this time around. Rocket Lake therefore fits into the same LG1200 socket such as CPUs of the yesteryear. On paper, clock speeds hardly seem to have changed at all, and what doesn't really come in as a surprise is the fact this processor is still based on the by now fairly ancient 14 nanometer process. They obviously keep milking every single last drop they can out of that one. Noteworthy, on the other hand, is the improved memory controller, now officially supporting DDR4 3200 MHz natively, just like the latest Ryzen counterparts by AMD do. A lot of enthusiasts are pretty much jumping on a bandwagon of taking Rocket Lake down more or less, but respect where it's due, Intel now does offer a pretty significant advantage over Comet Lake, and that is official PCI Express 4.0 support with such a Rocket Lake chip, something AMD has been offering us since 2019. But hey, better late than never. With current graphics cards, not really that big of a deal anyway, but if you're one of those people that want to go with blazing fast NVMe SSDs with transfer rates up in the thousands of megabytes per second, you now can with Intel. Very well, what am I testing with today? For the motherboard, I'm going with the ASRock Z590 PG Velocita, or rather Velocita, featuring the new Intel Z590 chipset. By updating the BIOS to the latest version, Intel's 11th gen CPUs should also go perfectly with Z490 boards in theory. The CPU is being cooled by the Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler and to avoid most serious bottlenecks and to avoid having to reduce screen resolutions and graphic settings, I am once again going with the very pricey ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC graphics card. Now I've also promised you overclocking, and by that I mean nothing too special actually, it sure could need a little more time tweaking and optimizing, but I did get this thing 100% stable at 5.1 GHz, with an offset of 100 mV in terms of CPU voltage. At stock settings, without any cheating going on, such as MCE, multicore enhancement or PBO, precision boost overdrive with AMD, I'm getting to fairly respectable 4.8 GHz on all 8 cores. That clock speed even can be maintained for quite a long time. 
we are looking at a CPU voltage of 1.25 to 1.26 volts. With overclocking, I managed to achieve a stable 5.1 GHz across all cores, that with a core voltage of 1.37 to 1.38 volts, which in terms of temperatures does cause minor to, well, let's put it this way, problems. More on that later. At stock settings in the single core test, I'm by the way more or less achieving Intel's stated max boost clock of 5.3 GHz. When overclocked to 5.1 GHz, I'm of course bound to that exact number, which in tests like these in theory could turn out to be a disadvantage. Things do tend to look better under more realistic circumstances though. For instance, in a game Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at stock, the CPU is pretty much sitting at around 4.8 GHz with occasional peaks of 5.1 GHz. By overclocking, we are seeing those 5.1 GHz constantly with close to no fluctuations. But let's get to the part you're actually here for, the benchmarks. Enjoy, but make sure to buckle up, just a little heads up there. It becomes clear Intel has gone for quite the chaotic CPU launch this time around, and as was suggested for months, it seems we are really only dealing with a quick stopgap, albeit it appears to make only very little sense. To quickly summarize those test results, in multicore heavy workloads such as productivity, the new 11900K noticeably drops behind the 10900K, which does make sense since it comes with two fewer cores. On the flip side, the single core performance has increased by a fair bit, so from an architectural standpoint, not too shabby. Sadly, that performance gain found in the single core realm is not enough to actually crown the 11900K as the new gaming king by any means. In close to every single one of my tested scenarios, the X flagship model still takes the lead. 
the 11900K pretty much has to share its spotlight with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 8-core processor, and even that one not only takes the lead in productivity, such as rendering and the like, but also in many of the gaming-oriented tests. On top of that, the 5800X currently can be had for about $450, which is significantly less than those $650 to $800 for the 11900K. Price-wise, it would make a whole lot more sense to compare the 11900K with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, equipped with 12 cores, and that CPU does in fact destroy the new Core i9 flagship in pretty much every discipline. No matter how you twist and turn it, the i9-11900K simply does not appear to be that good. The temperatures are looking okay at stock settings, nothing to complain there. Worrying though is the power draw, with over 300 watts given the offered performance that's far from being good. That's exactly what the i9-10900K from last year was fighting with. Things do seem even worse now that there's not enough performance offered by this year's 11900K to back up that power draw. Well, the 11900K does appear better once we start overclocking it. By doing that, it now is somewhat capable of dealing with the 10900K, but then again, you could just as well overclock that one. Aside from that, there's a high price to pay. First of all, the CPU is running quite toasty, it's very hard to keep cool with a somewhat normal cooling solution, and on top of that, noise levels therefore increase by a lot, which makes sense, since the fans need to ramp up to help dissipate the heat faster. And last but not least, the power consumption skyrockets with almost 500 watts. It's so high it practically wrecks my chart. Yes, that's the power draw with the GPU running idle. So overclocking that not too energy efficient processor in the first place, not something I would recommend doing. Still, I'm fairly impressed by how well that ASRock motherboard is handling that system under those brutal circumstances. Hats off. Nonetheless, we need to take a look at this completely objectively. Don't get me wrong, the general performance such an i9-11900K brings to the table sure is great, no doubt about it. Where issues start to arise is when taking pricing into consideration, as well as when comparing against Intel's flagship offering of the yesteryear. From a price point of view, the 11900K not only is positioned significantly worse than AMD's counterpart, but Intel's new chip kinda makes the i9-10900K with 10 cores appear better, which in itself cannot necessarily be considered that good of a deal to start with. We, or rather Intel, is in the middle of a dilemma, or as how I tend to call it, they're deep in a mud puddle. And it appears as if they won't lend their new kit on a block a helping hand out of the mud puddle anytime soon. They just threw that CPU into the market half-heartedly, leaving it to be torn apart by disappointed enthusiasts and fans. The bottom line is, the i9-11900K could essentially be considered to be a faster i7-10700K, which for the most part only is thanks to the higher single-core performance. Only with Alder Lake, we'll most likely see Intel's next and hopefully serious move. According to rumors, we'll yet again have to expect a new socket, but to make up for it, we should finally be getting up to 16 cores within that mainstream lineup, just like it's the case with AMD. Furthermore, Intel apparently will finally also leave behind their 14 nanometer process for good. These are all half-baked rumors though, we can't be for sure, we don't exactly know what and if everything turns out to be true, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now there's still one question left worth discussing. Why exactly does the 11900K run fairly hot when overclocking it, when an 8-core CPU of the previous 10th generation was capable of running a whole lot cooler? Well, the thing is, as far as I know, Rocket Lake was initially intended to be released with Intel's 10 nanometer process. But at the end of the day, Intel were pretty much forced to backport everything to the by now fairly ancient and optimized to death 14 nanometer process. So honestly, the bottom line here being, I only really see one noteworthy advantage here, PCI Express 4.0 support. Everything else this Core i9-11900K does really doesn't impress me in the slightest. With current pricing, I really don't think this is a CPU worth recommending. With that being said, thank you so much for sticking around this incredibly long. 
there was a lot to talk about today. Stay safe out there and take care.